Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Championship Leadership Podcast. And today uh, we have Hans Struzina. He is a member of the, uh, the Wall Street Journal's top 100 nationally ranked real estate teams, the Gunderman Group. He has a podcast called Another Way to Play, which I just had the honor of being a guest on. And also, um, he, uh, he, cap he capped off his incredible 12-year rowing career uh, as a member of the 2016 Olympic rowing team. So I'm excited to have Hans here today. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you, man. It's, it's an honor and a pleasure. Yeah, absolutely. So I always love to kick off our conversation and just ask, what does championship leadership mean to you when you hear that? You know, it's kind of a unique name when my friend recommended that name. I wasn't sure about it, but it's definitely grown on me. And, and so I always love to hear the different answers. So, yeah, what, is, what does championship leadership mean to you when you hear it? Man, that's a, that's a great question. I mean, my head certainly goes to sports first and foremost, yeah. um, just because, and, and specifically the captain of a, of a team. And, you know, in my case, it was certainly a rowing team. Mm -hmm. um, but just in general, that's where my head goes. But as I, as I sort of have thought about that, um, since we'd been talking about coming on the show, you know, to me, it's, it's a little bit deeper than just sort of a title and, and like a little star or a, something on your jersey. It's, yeah. it's, it's kind of a feeling you get um, when either someone is just and is leading people in a way that is not um, frantic, is not uh, you know domineering or, or negative, but it's like inspiring and someone who can really get the best out of you um, or or getting the best out of somebody else if you're the leader in that case. So I, I really think that that is one thing that that all leaders have in common, and you know, is getting the most out of the other people and making other people look good in a lot of cases. Yeah, you know, that's really important what you said. It's like you know, we've heard it say uh, said before. You know, just because you're in a leadership position doesn't mean that you're really a leader, right? Um, there's two, that's like, there's two different things. It's just a title versus actually someone that actually does and is a championship leader, which goes to what you said. Like, it's, it's not just like the captain star on the Jersey or the uniform that makes the leader. Now there's probably a reason they have that, that star, but, mm -hmm. but not always, right? Sometimes the captain is, is, is given that title because they might be the best player, which then most people would assume, well, he must be the the best leader, the leader of the team. And mm -hmm. that's definitely not the case 100% of the time. What's your experience inside of that? Uh, you know, just from the, from the rowing standpoint, like how many members were on your team, first of all? Well, a, a rowing team is, is a little bit unique. So in, in high school and college, uh, you'll have a, a bunch of tiers of eights. And most people think, you know, varsity, JV. Um, but a lot of teams will also have 3V, 4V novice which means simply that it's your first year so you have a, a huge variety of people in a, in, a, in a rowing team is you know 60 to 80 kids in a high school yeah. team you know up to 25 to 30 on a college squad so it's it's a relatively large squad that's divided into these different boats um, but most specifically there's eight people in a rowing shell typically um, in the college level and, and then in the Olympics or in the national team circuit, there are smaller boat classes. Um, so it can be as, as few as one person in a boat um, and as many as eight plus a coxswain. So a total of nine. Okay. And uh, yeah, maybe this is a great time uh, for you to just kind of tell us a little bit about yourself, your path, and really how that's gotten you to where you are today. You, you, you know, the athletic career, the, the, the rowing is done. Um, and now you professionally are in the real estate world as we talk, mm -hmm. the top 100 ranked team and uh, the, the success is continuing. But yeah, give us an idea of how you got, got to where you are today. Uh, um, definitely a lot of ups and downs and hard work and successes and failures, man, for sure. All of the above. Um, I, I started out life as sort of the last kid to grow and that sort of shaped me in a lot of ways, both, you know, mentally as well as my work ethic and, um, and in self-esteem, frankly. And so I, I struggled kind of up and down and sideways and backwards and forwards through school, through grade school, through high school, um, both from a self-esteem standpoint, trying to compete on the sports field, uh, as well as, is in the classroom. 
and ultimately was fortunate enough to have some mentors and some, you know, built in self-worth through my family and my parents and all that, um, that I just kept going and kept working hard and trying to figure it out and trying to achieve the highest level I could. Um, and then when I, when I grew and sort of built up some more self-esteem, you know, later in high school, that's, that's also about the time I found rowing and those two worlds just kind of collided like me finding a sport that I had a knack for yeah. combined with, you know, physically growing and then, and then being able to compete at it, it really just started to skyrocket me from there. Um, which then I got recruited to college to the university of Washington, had a lot of success there and then ultimately went on to the national team and, um, had to learn how to play that game, which was a totally different game than college athletics. Can imagine. Um, and then as you mentioned at the top of the show, uh, being some, you know, being a member of the Olympic team. And that was, that was obviously the pinnacle of my, my sporting career. Um, and definitely had some su successes and failures along that, along that journey, no doubt. Yeah. So what, what took you from, you know, from that, right? 2016, not that long ago, four years ago, it goes mm -hmm. by quick. Um, it does. Transition from that. I mean, you know, you're in the Olympics. You're one of the best, obviously, in our country and then in the world as well at what you do. And then talk a little bit about what was that transition like? Was it to from that to professionally in what you do today? Was it an easy transition? Was there some struggle? Like I think to like NFL players or major league, you know, any any uh, of the major sports, these these athletes they retire and then they some a lot of times they struggle or they they kind of feel lost and, and don't know what to do or where to go to how to replace that. Was there anything, uh, did you experience anything like that for yourself personally? Yeah, man. Uh, huh, absolutely. Yeah. I was really tied up as, as one must be at that level in yeah. sport and in my sport specifically. So my identity, you know, my, my daily routines, my, the way I even like introduced myself was, as as an athlete basically yeah, right and uh, and an aspiring olympic athlete and then an olympic athlete once i qualified and then once we finished you know or once we got to the games of course we had aspirations of meddling and we we certainly had the potential on paper and in actuality to medal uh, but rowing is one of those sports that's like the sums greater than um, the parts, right. And, mm -hmm. and sometimes you just sort of as a team come together and can elevate beyond what, whatever it says on paper. And that didn't happen for us in the final. We, we really performed probably a bit below our peak. Um, not because anyone wasn't physically ready, but just the synergy wasn't totally there. Yeah. And, and to win an Olympic gold medal or an Olympic medal period, it, it has to be there on that day. And so transitioning out of that, that world was not only challenging just from a re, uh, redefinition of my identity, mm -hmm. but you know, dealing with the fact that I've got to this stage after 12 years and then we kind of flopped. Um, and failed, frankly, is the way I looked at it. And, yeah. and that took me on a path of a lot of self evaluation, um, some mentoring, some coaching, some therapy, and a lot of just deep dives into like, what does this actually mean? And I luckily came out the other side of it, realizing that it didn't mean that I was a failure. We may have not meddled, but I got way more out of the sport than, uh, than, you know, just a, just a medal or, or no medal. Um, and it really teed me up ultimately to become a version of myself that I, I never would have thought was possible had I not gone through some of that self-evaluation and work and coaching and all that stuff um, to then be in a position to take an opportunity on a team like the Gunderman group and then run with it. Like I've been able to do the last uh, almost two years. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for sharing some of that. I mean, that, I, you know, that's really some of the stories that, you know, from the outside looking in, uh, the people that are spectating and watching and seeing things on TV, it's like, those are the stories that you don't necessarily hear about that are very real for, you know, people like yourself that, that are in that, the athletes, that's like your world, that's your identity. I remember when I played football in college, it's like, football was my life like yep. I wasn't playing at the olympic level but it's like yeah when i introduced it, like that's all i would talk about was i wasn't talking about school it was like talking about football in the upcoming season and, and and just and then when that was over again 
you know, there's a little bit of that for me as well. So maybe talk about who are some of the, the men or women, championship leaders, coaches, mentors that you've had along the way in that process that uh, maybe even helped you through that transition to help you realize that, hey, like your worth isn't tied to not winning a medal or not. Even if you did, it's not tied to that, right? And yep. because I think there's probably many that, that do win the medals and they, and they still have the similar experience because now that's all their identity is. But, um, but yeah, just talk about uh, maybe who are some of the people that have impacted you that have been great leaders, coaches, and mentors, and, and more so just really like, what have you taken from them? What was so dynamic or what are some of the characteristics from them that have helped kind of shape and mold who you are as a person? Well, the first one that comes to mind, given the context you just asked the question in, is my wife. Uh, she is really the first person that I can think of that, I mean, your parents are always going to feel this way about you, but like you're their yeah. parents, so it doesn't count, right? <laughs> um, just kidding, mom and dad. Um, but she was the first person to really demonstrate to me in a very real, tangible way what unconditional love looked like. And I, up until that point, my view of love, even though my parents, you know, they, I, I didn't feel conditionally loved by them, but, you know, I, I felt like I was a performer, like I would go out and be a sports star and, and be, you know, or go succeed in school, get accepted to business school, you know, some things like that. And I got love from it. I got affirmation from it and, and, it meant something about me and then people liked me more. And so there was this cycle that I built up and she was really the first person to show me like, it, it's like, I don't love you because of what you do. It's because of who you are mm. and you know, you are as you are enough and like, yeah, you can always improve and keep growing, but like it starts with that base of um, acceptance. Mm. And to me, like that's, really important because if you're always running away from you know who you are who you think you are in this moment it's going to be nearly impossible to get where it is that you want to go in the end yeah yeah i love that thank you for sharing that and that's awesome that you know that you have your wife there um to be there for you like that and to have those people in your life what's um talk about how so you finish the olympics you don't medal, of course, and you don't feel like you feel like you, you failed and, and uh, you know, the outcome wasn't what you wanted it to be. You go get some help, you figure some things out. And now you're on one of the, the top um, teams in the real estate profession in the country. So, how, you know, I mean, I don't think that there is it's a mistake that someone comes from elite level in the Olympics to also now this opportunity, like there's definitely a correlation there, but I would love to hear like, how, how did that process come about? How did you make that connection and, and become a part of this successful team? Yeah. The, the way that it happened was incredibly organic. Actually. Um, I was introduced to the team leaders, David and Andrew, uh, through a mutual connection, who is a client and now very dear friend of both me and my wife. Um, she's a client of hers. Who she, uh, my wife's a personal trainer. And, and so this, this friend, Nancy, said, oh, I was at this party the other day and I met you know, I've, I've have met these guys, but I was talking to them, David and Andrew and their sons in rowing, you're in real estate. They're really good at real estate. You guys should know each other. And she just made that connection. And so from there, um, we went out to a lunch or a brunch with them, got to know them a little bit and just was sort of intrigued by their style and the way that they, they performed and nothing really happened with it. And then about three or four months later, um, the team that I was on, cause they're the second real estate team I've been a part of, um, things were going well. I had a, a pretty successful by all counts first year. I, I did like nine deals my first year, which in this geography is pretty unheard of. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, was telling them they were kind of impressed by that, but they were like, you know, you, you're doing this a lot in a way that's a lot harder than it needs to be done. And long story short, I finally recognized that. Um, and then just the t people we were bringing on the way that we were managing, it just wasn't really clicking. Um, so long story short is I, I reached out to them 
uh, and I was talking to a couple other people, but reached back out to them and said, hey, here's my strengths. Here's what I think I can do. Here's, here's what I can bring to your team. Um, and here's why it matters to you. And they, they had been talking about potentially stepping out in not too long. So I was like, hey, I can, I can help you do that sooner, or, you know, take stuff off your plate and kind of laid it out for them. And they liked that apparently. So they brought me in to have a chat and we, I, gosh, we had two, three or four hour interviews. And at the end of the second one, they made me an offer to come on their team. And I, I jumped at that opportunity. It obviously was a tough conversation with my current team, but yeah. you know, when, when you have those opportunities, you take them and, and I've, I've been really glad I did. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, that, that really ties right into a, a question that I, I do like to ask with the guests is, especially championship leaders, I see like they have this incredible vision and not just the vision, but like they're able to make difficult decisions um, when they realize that that opportunity is in front of them. Many have these opportunities coming through them and, and kind of pass them by without realizing it, right? Maybe later down the road, they realize that. Uh, but but I think the championship leaders, they have that ability to not only recognize it, but then to, to act on it and make the decision. Um, so what, what is it for you that, like, what's the vision for you? Because I know as an athlete, especially an Olympic athlete, you definitely have a vision, you definitely have an outcome in mind. Everything is driven around that. Um, and then you go out and execute on that to the, to the best of your ability. So what, what do you have for you? Like, what's the impact that you want to make? I know you have the podcast. So obviously, there's, there's some impact mm -hmm. that you're trying to create there uh, inside of what you do professionally with the Gunnerman Group. Like, yeah, tell, tell me, you know, what is it that you want to accomplish in the next five to 10 years? Impact you want to make? Man, that, that's something I'm frankly going through right now and trying to figure out. I mean, I certainly have goals for myself and for, for my wife and I, um, you know, financially and professionally and just as a relationship between the two of us. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as an impact, like, you know, very broadly, because that's about as, as good as I can give you. Like, I'd love to be um, in, involved very positively with a lot of people's lives. And, and that starts, you know, roughly with the podcast yeah. uh, is, is having these conversations, getting to know people one on one a little better, like yourself and like what we're doing right now. Yeah. Um, but also, you know, hopefully giving somebody a piece of content in their life via listening to it that they can take and implement hopefully just you know tweaks their trajectory and just just a way that like over a couple of years or 10 years will just send them into a completely different life and and maybe they'll realize it was my show or maybe they won't yeah. um but but having some kind of a positive impact like that i think is really exciting to me and and frankly beyond that like i'm i'm still working on it like i'm still trying to decide uh, what excites me? What, you know, what do I really get up out of bed and, you know, what's going to drive me forward? Um, because you're right. When I had the Olympics, it was really clear. It was, you know, mm -hmm. in June of 2018 or 2016, uh, we're going to go try and race at the Olympics. And so there was a very clear goal and a timeline for it. And now going back to like trying to assimilate into normal life after the the games, like I don't have that anymore. And so I'm really working to identify what that is for me and and how it's going to to hopefully play out in my life so um you know i i don't have a, a more fully full formed answer other than I'm, I'm working on it yeah absolutely and that's that's perfectly fine as well so what um what are you know one or two critical moments or turning points that you've had in your life, as I like to call them, where, you know, it's kind of that fork in the road moment where you obviously did make the decision that you did, which has you right where you are today, has you on the path that you are, but you know, basically the one where had you decided to go the road more traveled, maybe the one that some more people were trying to pull you towards and then what you really knew you wanted to do for yourself, you could be in like a completely different place right now in life. I think the listeners, especially business owners, entrepreneurs, they, you know, they're very well in that moment right now. And it's, and it's a difficult one. And so it's, it's great to hear these stories from others like yourself that are successful that, to help them to get, make the right choice for them. Man. Um, there's a couple that come to mind. One, which 
seems so simple when I'm going to say this, but it, but it really was an interesting turning point was I, I had this coach who uh, I think he was the assistant coach or the second assistant coach tell me one day very casually and in passing, he's like, a goal is not a goal unless it's written down. And I'm like, okay, cool. And I actually took that to heart and I went and like, did a little word document and typed out all my rowing and my school goals at the time. Cause I think I was a sophomore in college, yeah. put it up on my wall and then didn't really pay attention to it beyond that. Yeah. Um, but after the end of the year, when I was going to sort of clean out my room for the summer, r- saw that up on the wall and realized like I had checked every single thing off that list without even totally consciously knowing it. Yeah, isn't that and yeah. And I had engaged with those goals every day subconsciously. Sometimes I read them, but not every single day, multiple times a day, but I was seeing them all the time. And so it was sort of present subconsciously at a minimum. And, you know, ever since then, I've been writing goals down in various forms, you know, whether mm-hmm. it's posted up on my wall or I journal about it every day or some combination, you know, that was, that was pretty big for me. Um, the other one was really the... Um, well, I guess there's there's two others. One was when I left the Olympics, I had a job opportunity to, to work with these guys in San Francisco who were starting up a, a small commercial brokerage. And they were former rowers. One of them was in the Olympics. So there was just a lot of synergy right there. Yeah. Um, I think the entire firm in the beginning was all rowers and most of it still is. Yeah. And they've been doing very well, but it just, it's something felt wrong in there. It didn't feel, it was like a, just I didn't want to do the commute, put on the um and I ended up doing the residential real estate thing. So that you know, that was that was one of those moments when it was like this is an easier path, this is more defined, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do what feels right. And and then ultimately, like we talked about a few minutes ago, taking that pivot out of that original opportunity that I had that I started um after about 18 months and leaving it for for the Gunderman group was was a huge challenge um at the time just emotionally um because i had a lot of projects and a lot of time invested into that uh that group i actually had a flip going at that time aside from my normal real estate business so it was just a there was a lot happening right at that moment and i Mm -hmm. i just was like you know what this isn't going to come around that often so i got to take this and and i'm sure glad i did yeah, absolutely. And, you know, yeah, thank you for sharing those. Uh, you know, coming back to the first one, right? <laughs> it's something, something extremely small and in passing that maybe even your coach didn't even think twice about, like, just kind of uh, automatic response that he's probably said to many people before and thought nothing about that yet is uh, something that that always stuck with you. And I think we can all, we all, if we think hard enough, have something like that. Yep. Um, you know, at that time, it was just something like, oh, man, yeah, simple, but but uh, profound for you. And, you know, I know I've written uh, goals down in, in books and kind of put them on the shelf. And then I come back to them and I'm like, holy cow, I was like, I did this. Like, this yeah. is my life right now. And it, it is. There's something so powerful about that. Um, and then the piece of, you know, it could have been very easy for you to stay on that path, like the rowers and the synergy that you're talking about, the commercial real estate yet uh you know just something off right call it god you call it your gut you call it the voice whatever you want to call it but you Mm -hmm. listen to it and uh of course it has you where you are today and everything's working out and then the last piece is everything's going well like sometimes you things seem to be going all right like had you not made the, the jump to gunderman group i'm sure you'd still be fine um and it sounds like you had a lot of reasons maybe not even to make that jump but you did and and um and you're so happy that you did. So yeah, thank you for sharing those. It's, it's powerful for others to hear that. Absolutely. What, uh, what, you know, as we, as we do wrap this up here and um, I just always love to ask like, what are one or two things that you could give the listeners that they could implement today to help them move forward? Um, you know, whatever that might be for you, some things that you live by and uh, stand by guiding principles that, that uh, others could take and, and put into their life. Well, the, you know, certainly it's not a goal unless it's written down. I think that that's yeah. critical because regardless of your intention, it's, it's abstract when it's in your brain. 
it's really it's wishy-washy it can change with your emotions but when it's on a piece of paper whether you typed it or you you wrote it and it's pinned somewhere now it's physical now it's real it's mm-hmm. you can you can touch it you can smell it you can taste it if you wanted to not that you would but you, right. you get your senses involved it's a yeah, different absolutely. relationship with it and you can check it off and you can all, all of that stuff so i i firmly believe that and if there's something you want to uh achieve or or tackle like writing it down even on a sticky note that's on your bathroom mirror some it doesn't even have to be fancy um, will drastically increase your chances of succeeding with it as well as um, change your relationship with it. And, and so that's, that's certainly number one. The other one is, is checking your ego. Like I cannot tell you how many times I have to like literally bite my tongue and take a step back. And like, sometimes I don't admittedly, I don't do this all the time, but like I try to most of the time, like check my ego, check my frustration and be like, what am I learning here? Like, what is this person telling me? Or what is this situation need that I don't have or that I can't give it? Uh, And then, and then take action steps to hopefully get that thing or, you know, that piece of knowledge or that, um, you know, negotiation skill or whatever, whatever it is and, and be willing to learn from your environment and your situations as opposed to you know thinking you have it figured out and uh and just trying to bulldoze your way through it because it's yeah. it's a lot harder that way yeah thank you that now it's uh that is extremely important and i appreciate you sharing those what um when's the book coming out this that's a question i want to know Are you got a book <laughs> oh, um, like a book in you it, wow um thank you first of all uh <laughs> I, I unfortunately don't have plans for, well, I, let's, let's not, let's not say I don't have plans for it. I'd love to write something at some point, but I don't know that I'm, I'm quite there personally yet to be yeah. able to, to put pen to paper, but, but, um, I will let you know. <laughs> awesome. I love it. Yeah. Um, yeah. What are a few ways that we can find out more about you and what you have going on, your podcast, um, and everything else that you got going well, on? Yeah. The, the podcast is called another way to play. It's available anywhere. This podcast is, it's probably there. Um, and, and in that podcast, we talk about freedom, uh, specifically around finances, um, uh, finances, uh, location and time independence and, and how people are doing that. And everyone does it a little bit differently. Like you and I had a very different conversation from pretty much everybody else that I've had on the show, but there Mm -hmm. are some trends that run through there. So, um, you know, you'd want to listen, listen. And if you have any sense of a transition towards freedom, um, come check it out. You'll get some value out of it, hopefully. Um, and then if you're uh, looking to do social, I'm at Chief Sna, S-N-A-H on Instagram. And then I've got my website, which has just more general information about me and the show and my real estate practice at uh, HansStrazina.com. Awesome, brother. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll definitely get that linked up so that the folks can def- uh, easily access those. Uh, appreciate you being here today and taking time out of your uh, busy life. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah, man. It's my pleasure. Thanks for having me on and, and keep up the good work. Love the show and love the content. Absolutely. Thank you.